Welcome to Sobriety Checkpoint. I'm your host, Felicia Hermley. I'm a 12-stepper turned therapist. I'm married and I have two littles under five. I love Jesus, but have had my fair share of struggling with church culture and religion. I know what it's like to be stuck in a restless, irritable, and discontent rut, drunk and sober. In this podcast, you're going to find solutions to navigating mental health, spirituality, and relationships to experience the peace you've been craving. It's time for that desperately sought after solo target run. Grab your keys and let's go for a drive. There's no judgment or breathalyzer at this sobriety checkpoint. Welcome back to another episode of sobriety checkpoint and happy new year. It isn't quite new year for me. I'm recording this episode on December 26th. The plan was to record yesterday on Christmas night, but I was just way too exhausted. I was thinking about it today and I was a little bit confused about why I was so tired last night. Um, But as I was thinking about recording this episode and thinking about my exhaustion, I guess it makes sense that I would be so exhausted at the end of Christmas Day after a few days of spending time with family, having the house full of kids running around, tons of food, a lot of food. And of course, the food is probably, you know, one of the biggest pieces of of the tiredness. And it occurred to me that it makes complete sense why I was so exhausted last night. I'm pretty tired tonight as well. So I decided to come to the back of the house and hang out in the spare room to record this episode. Um, I don't know if you will be able to hear the kids in the other room or not. I usually try to wait until everybody is in bed until I record, but I'm giving it a shot. So if you hear them, that is my life. So, (laughs) and since it's not quite the new year for me, I have today's episode and another episode that I'm going to record before the year ends. And these two last episodes of 2023 will be your first two episodes of 2024. My last episode of the year talked about suiting up and showing up. The episode that I just had uh, last week with J.P. Cefeli. And I think I just want to kind of continue on that theme of just tying up the year and reflecting and taking a minute to just pause, take a look back in order to see where I'm at and look forward. And the reason that I'm doing this here on the show is because I hope that this will encourage you to do the same. Even if you didn't do it in 2023, you know, even if you didn't do that reflection and, you know, thinking about the year, you know, it's still the first episode of the year. It's still, you know, the first week of the year when you're going to be listening to this episode. So my encouragement for you is to take some time and pause, take a look at 2023, and just make some plans for for this year. I think it's really important to set an intention, and this will be, you know, the first time that I'm going to be talking about my intentions kind of on a, a public forum here on the show. For today's episode, I'm going to be talking about a handful of things, but I think that the main theme for today is going to be about family since yesterday was Christmas. Tomorrow is my son's birthday. He's going to be five. It has been quite a busy five years. It's pretty crazy to think about the fact that he's five. I don't know how time flies so quickly. And I know most of my listeners are parents, so I know that you would understand that as well, that time is just so fast. And 
sometimes it just doesn't make sense how fast time is. Every year, my grandma puts together a book of different things that she wrote throughout the year. And this is what she gives us every year for Christmas. I don't know when this started, but I was taking a look at the booklets that I have from her on my bookshelf, and it might be about 15 or 20 years now that she's been putting these books together. And it's pretty amazing to have these, I think, because she writes poems, she writes stories about her upbringing, she writes stories about her parents and about being a little girl. And I wanted to read two things that she wrote for today's episode and just talk about these these writings as a way to reflect on on the year and to reflect on family, to reflect on time and how fast it goes. Because I think it's good to slow down and think about these things. The first one that I'm going to read is called In Reverse. My daughter, her name is Faith, and that is what she's talking about in this poem. So here it goes, In Reverse by Valerie Lee. Today I lost a tooth, and I'm betting I'm losing as many as Faith is getting. My speech grows fainter. She's learning to talk. I'm losing my balance. She's learning to walk. She sleeps like a baby. I'm restless and worse. She's going ahead. I'm stuck in reverse. It's frustrating, but when all's said and done, that's the way life fades and the way it's begun. So I will take my failings with grace and leave the great beginnings with faith. I was a little bit nervous about reading this because the first time that I read it, I cried my eyes out. Um, This is a poem that she wrote for, I believe it was last year's book, so 2022. And my daughter was about 18 months, maybe she was a year old when she showed me this poem. And I just think it's so beautiful that she that she wrote this and just the way that she reflected on time, reflected on, you know, her, her last chapter, the last chapter of her life. My grandma, she's, I believe she's about 85 years old and my daughter, she's two. When she wrote this, she was one. And right now there's been a lot going on in the life of my family My grandpa, he's on hospice, and my dad has been spending a lot of time here at my house because I live the closest to my grandpa. That way he doesn't have to drive back and forth to home because that's a longer drive for him. And there's been, you know, it's definitely been bittersweet to have my dad around. It's been really nice to have him around. It's also hard because I know that, you know, he's going going through it, and it's a really difficult time for him. And it feels impossible to just keep living life like normal when, when, you know, when death is kind of in the air. I definitely am not wanting this to be a downer episode. I know it's the beginning of the year, you know, and by no means, you know, this isn't, you know, um, this isn't something like a morbid reflection at all. I think reflection And, you know, just knowing that the end, the end of life eventually comes for all of us is an important thing to think about because I think it helps me to live life more present, you know, to be more mindful, to be more in the moment when I am reminded that there's an expiration, you know, my life has an expiration date and, you know, it makes me think about how I want to live my life today. So a few of the goals or intentions that I have for this upcoming year definitely have to do with being more mindful and present in my life, connecting more, diving deeper into my relationship with my higher power, and connecting with people in my family know this this holiday season was full 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 of family and you know people have been in and out of my house since Thanksgiving and it's been really nice 
to have them around. It's been, it's been fun. It's been, um, you know, a blessing. I feel grateful to have the space to have people just come and visit and hang out. And I'm reminded of the importance of spending time with the people that I love, you know, my kids, other family members, and just building relationships and connections, you know, being available for conversations with people. And, you know, that kind of leads me to the next bit on here about my community. I was reading an article today online about the importance of community when you have a podcast, when you're, when you are the host of a podcast. And, you know, it is, it is interesting because I'm, I'm here, I'm in this room, I'm all alone and I'm sitting here behind this microphone and I don't know whose ears this episode or any of my episodes fall on, but I, and I've said this in previous episodes that, you know, I want to know who you are and I have completely neglected my online Facebook community. This is another thing that I'm planning on spending more time in, in the new year. I need to figure out how to kind of organize my time and so that I can spend more time in there and get to know you. Um, It hasn't been an intentional... (laughs) Um, an intentional, you know, neglecting of of the community. It's just been more, you know, logistical trying to figure out how to manage my time so that I'm, you know, spending quality time in there and connecting with people because that really is important to me. And I guess with that said, if you haven't joined my community yet, now is the time because it's going to be a place where we can continue the conversations that I'm starting here on the show you know, whether it's an episode that I'm doing solo or a conversation with a guest and the topics that they bring to the table, you know, I want the conversations to continue over in my Facebook group. We'll talk about your takeaways from the different topics that you hear, from the stories that you've heard, and I always want to hear your feedback about what you want more of on the show. The cool thing that I think about the online world. And I mean, this, this goes with life in general, pretty much, but it's pretty amazing how it's actually possible to find community and connection online. I might've said this on last week's episode. I I don't know when, but I feel like there was an episode that I talked about how I experience God the most. And it is pretty much always when I am completely present in relationships, when I'm, when I'm able to show up, when I'm able to be, you know, with someone and, and we're just talking and, and we're in conversation, time just stops. And I can definitely just let time, time go by. Um, When I'm with people, I have to kind of pay attention to my clock because I can just let time go on without 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 paying attention but you know having kids as you know there has to be an end because there's responsibilities at home right and there are important responsibilities as well but I I hope that you know through building this online community I'll be able to make connections with amazing people You know, I know that there's amazing people listening to this show and I want to know who you are. I hope that we can, you know, foster that community. I want to foster this community um, on the Facebook group. Um, Go ahead and check out the show notes for that group. Take a look, join, join join the group. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to connecting. You know, that's also a place where you can connect with me if you have a desire to maybe even be a guest on the show, you know, we can talk about that as well. You know, the people who are listening, you know, I would love, I would love to have guests on the show who are listeners. It's actually pretty amazing. Last week, I got an email from somebody that told me that she's been listening to my show since day one. 
And I'm actually really stoked to connect with her in the new year because I'm going to have her as a guest on the show. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. You know, somebody that has been listening, has been an avid listener, and, you know, you're going to hear from her in the, in the coming weeks, uh, maybe in about a month or so. So to wrap up here, I had one more thing that I wanted to read that my grandma wrote. And it's called Earliest Memories by Valerie Lee. My earliest memories consist of images and emotions. I did not yet have words to describe them. That had to wait for a later time. I was sitting on a blanket on the dining room floor when a huge man, my great uncle Reynolds, came through the kitchen door. He was so tall, his head touched the top of the door, and so wide, his shoulders filled it from side to side. I stared in awe. I had never seen anyone so big. It was Christmas, and I was two and a half. As I wandered through the house, I was aware that I was recognized wherever I went. Grandpa patted my head. Aunt Alma slipped me a bit of bread. Aunt Mary picked me up and held me briefly. Without a word being said, I felt love for the first time. That same day, Mama put me in the crib for a nap. I screamed in anger and resentment because she had taken me away from the family and all that attention. So my first recognition of love and of anger came on the same day. I went with Daddy and his cousin to see his grandma's house that was to be torn down. I had just turned three. When we got there, I saw a beautiful white house with the front door standing open. Inside was a lady in a long brown wool dress. I knew she was inviting us in, although I had not heard anyone speak. When Daddy pointed out there were no steps to the door, my vision crumbled. I saw only an old abandoned house. I knew both the new house and the broken down house were real, but I didn't understand it. I was bewildered. I sometimes wonder why I have memories that go so far back. Maybe it is so I can understand how small children see things, how their understanding can be so different from what we adults see. I'm sure Mama was puzzled by my screaming when I was put in bed for a nap. In later years, she told me what an easy baby I was, so that must have been out of character. So these memories have taught me to be extra aware of the little ones who don't yet have language skills. They have taught me to be patient, and I have learned that none of us ever see anything the same way another person will see it. All in our diversity, we all matter. On this show, I've talked quite a bit about kids, about even our inner child. Um, I don't know about quite a bit, but I know it's at least come up a few times. And family is huge when it comes to recovery, when it comes to growing up and all of our experiences kind of lead to our our current day and you know they all lead they all lead to today and i'm amazed that my grandma has memories of two and a half and three years old i don't have memories that far back and i, I feel like my memory actually kind of sucks there's there's a lot that i don't really remember about my childhood and now that I have kids, I think that having them has forced me to try to be more childlike, to kind of play more. And, you know, that has been a really big thing in my recovery is to learn how to play. I feel like this this has been something that I just haven't really been good at. When I was drinking, I felt like I could let loose, like I could relax, like I could be myself. When in reality, you know, that wasn't me at all. That was some version of me that I thought maybe people liked more, you know, when I when I was able to let loose. And now, you know, 12 years into my recovery, I'm trying to figure out who I am still, right? I mean, I think it, it evolves, you know, who I am evolves, who, who you are evolves over time. And reading this writing that my grandma that my grandma wrote for this book, it's amazing to reflect on 
you know, just thinking about thinking about kids, thinking about perspective, thinking about a child's perspective and their experience, especially, you know, maybe their experience before they even have words. And, you know, when a kid is throwing a tantrum, that is communication. You know, that's one of the things that I'm learning. I'm not really great at being patient all the time. Definitely not. You know, I have um, a, a daughter who's two and a half. She's not talking a whole lot, but she definitely communicates. She communicates by screaming and yelling and hitting. <laughs> and, you know, it's my job to pay attention and try to help her learn the words, try to try to give her the words to copy. You know, these kids have definitely been my greatest, my greatest teachers and when I'm thinking about my grandma's earliest memories, one of the intentions that I want to set for 2024 has to do with my kids' earliest memories. I hope they are happy ones. I hope that they remember, you know, good things from this period of time. I, I hope that I can grow into the person that they need. And I'm super grateful that I'm sober because there is no way that I could grow into that person if I was still drinking. So as 2023 comes to an end, one last thing that I just want to reflect on is my absolute gratitude for my sobriety. I would not have the life that I have today if I wasn't sober. And that doesn't mean life is perfect. That doesn't mean that that everything it just feels good all the time you know there's there's hard times and i i know that there's some hard times coming um but that is that's just life you know it's a part of life and and i know that yeah i'm just so so grateful i feel like i'm at a loss for words here at the end of the the episode just looking forward to the new year uh, my next episode, I am going to have my husband as a guest here on the show. So I hope you will come back next week and, you know, get to know Jeff a little bit. We're going to we're going to end the year with with an episode together, uh, an episode of once again, some more reflection, some more intention setting for 2024. And I hope that you will come back. I hope that you'll spend your January with me here on the show, as well as over in the Facebook group. Um, I'm super grateful for you. Thank you for being a part of my life, a part of this podcast, and I'll see you back here next week. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Before you go, please subscribe and leave a five-star written review. Reviews help boost my ratings, which helps other parents in recovery find my show. If you're interested in emotional sobriety coaching, please reach out and schedule a call. Check out the show notes for my contact info and social links. Don't forget to like, follow, and share with a friend. I'm super excited to know this podcast is helping you. Tune in Thursdays for the latest episode. I'll see you back here on your next Target run. Until next time. This podcast is produced by Bob Sloan Audio Productions. We are stronger than we think we are. Fight and show your strength, good and grace from our God, good and grace from our God, good and grace from our God.